Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Cobb County Board of Zoning Appeals. And as is our custom this time of the year, with Christmas just around the corner, uh, I'd like to in introduce Officer Ott. O Officer Ott is here representing all our public servants and our first responders here in Cobb County. And if we'd all please rise, Officer Ott will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is our monthly meeting of the Cobb County Board of Zoning Appeals. And for those of you who are there here for the first time, let me give everybody a little insight on how we're going to conduct the meeting today. The first thing that we will concern ourselves with is the consent agenda. These are not only applications that this board, but also our professional board, our zoning board, and our engineering board have also reviewed. Uh, to our knowledge, there's no known opposition in any of these particular <laughs> cases. So the way we will proceed is Mr. Peterson, our head zoning administrator, will read each one of these cases into the record. The applicant, he or she, will identify themselves by raising their hand. And likewise, if there is anybody here in opposition, if they would identify themselves, and if we do have opposition, we will pull that particular case and hear it in its regular numeric order. Uh, the next thing we will concern ourselves is a continued case. Then we get into our regular cases. Uh, the process will again uh, transpire with Mr. Peterson reading these into the record. The applicant again will identify themselves. If there's any opposition, they will identify themselves. And at that time, anybody that's going to give testimony to this board, if they would come forward, Ms. Kim Wakefield is our officer of the day. Uh, she will swear those individuals in, and all testimony will be given to the podium to my right. The applicant at that time will have a 10 minute period to make their presentation to this board. And likewise, and collectively, the opposition will have a 10 minute period. Uh, there is no rebuttal, by the way, on these cases. So anything you want to tell us, tell us in that 10 minute period. If you have more than one speaker, be cognizant of the fact that you only have a 10 minute period. Once we complete that, uh, we have one hell case that we will hear. And John, I believe that takes care of our agenda. Do you have any special announcements to make at this time? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. There is one announcement to make before we start the hearing. There is one case on today's agenda, which was continued by the Board of Zoning Appeals until the February 10, 2016 variance hearing date. And that case will not be heard today. That's variance case V-153, Rex D. Halton. That case will be heard in February. And I would like to ask people in today's audience if you have a cell phone, please put the, uh, the mute on the, the, your cell phone because the ringing does interfere with broadcasts and presentations. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'm ready to start the consent agenda. All right, John, let's get right to it then. Cobb County Board of Zoning Appeals, variance hearing consent agenda for December 9th, 2015. Variance case V140. EZ69RH Wendy Hill LLC request a variance to waive the side setback for a sign and to allow a sign closer to the center line <coughs> of the roadway for uh, other than the co permits in landlot 851 and 852 of the 17th district. The property is located on the north side of Wendy Hill Road and on the east side of South Park Place, west of Interstate 75. Staff recommends approval subject to sign renderings contained in the variance analysis received by the Zoning Division on August 12, 2015, and signs to be located entirely on the applicant's property. Is the applicant present? Is the applicant here for V140? Is anyone here opposed to V140? Mr. Chairman, they're not here currently. Okay, let's see if we can make contact with those folks, uh, Madam Clerk, and if we can, if they can get here before close of business, we'll help them. If not, we'll have to continue it. All right, John, let's go to our next one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Variance case V160, FC Winder, LLC, request a variance to waive front setback from required 50 feet to 49 feet, waive the rear setback from required 30 feet to 3 feet, waive the maximum allowable uh, compact vehicle parking space from 20% to 36%, and to waive the minimum depth for a 90 degree parking stall from required 19 feet to 18 feet, 
and to waive the minimum depth for a parallel park and stall from required 24 feet to 19 feet in land lots 596 and 629 of the 16th district. The property is located on the north side of East Piedmont Road, east of Sandy Plains Road. Staff recommends approval. <coughs> Uh, subject to variance is only for the encroachments shown on the site plan received by the zoning division on September 10th, 2015. The applicant's representative is present. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V160? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case V163, Derek Murray requests a variance to weigh, to increase the maximum allowable impervious surface from 35% to 40% and to allow an accessory structure, a new pool, spa, and patio. To be closer to the side street uh, right away line than the principal building in land lot 958 of the 16th district. The property is located on the west corner of Sugar Mill Road and Monty Drive. Staff recommends approval subject to stormwater management comments. Is the applicant present? Is the applicant here for V163? Is there anyone here opposed to V163? Mr. Chairman, that applicant does not appear to be here either. Okay, Madam Secretary, Madam Clerk, we'll try it again then, too. Thank you. Moving on to V-164, Dana and Lisa uh, Pellerin request a variance to waive the rear setback required 30 feet to 20 feet in land lot 160 of the 19th district. The property is located at the western terminus of Manatee Court, west of Magnolia <clears throat> Springs Trace. Staff recommends approval. Subject to the variance is only for the encroachments as shown on the site plan received by the zoning division on October 5th, 2015. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicants are here. Is there anyone here opposed? The variance case V-164. Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case V-165, Vinings Overlook LLC. Request a variance to amend the approved site plan of V-58, 2015. Uh, in land lot 885 and 909 of the 17th district. The property is located on the west side of Overlook Parkway and on the north side of Paces Ferry Road. Staff recommends approval of the variance subject to the site plan received by the zoning division on October 7, 2015 with the district commissioner approved minor modifications. Traffic comments, applicant to pay in the sidewalk fund, final determination of sidewalk uh, on Overlook Parkway to be determined by the district commissioner and sewer comments. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V-165? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case V-166, Dwayne Eady, request a variance to waive the minimum public road frontage uh, to zero feet in land lots 617 and 618 of the 19th district. The property is located on the north and south sides beyond the western terminus of Caleb James Road. West of Phillips Road. Staff recommends approval, subject to the site plan received October 7, 2015. <coughs> Is the applicant present? Is the applicant here for V166? Is there anyone here opposed to V166? Uh, I spoke to the <coughs> applicant on this. I expect him to be here. Mr. Moore, uh, would you uh, would you be willing to accept that for the applicant's uh, thing? I think Mr. Moore will represent the applicant. Yeah, let the so the he's here. The applicant is here. There's no one opposed. Okay, 166. That's Dwayne Eady. Okay. Okay, 68. B-168, Jane K. Uh, Dinnan uh, and James Dinnan request a variance to weigh the front setback from required 45 feet to 40 feet and the way the rear setback from required 40 feet to 25 feet <clears throat> in land lot 756 of the 16th district. The property is located on the west side of Eastside Drive, south of Bishop Lake Road. Staff recommends approval. Uh, subject to the variance is only for the encroachments uh, as shown on the site plan received by the zoning division on October 8, 2015. Is the applicant here? A direct show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed? The variance case B-168. That direct shows no one opposed. And lastly, uh, variance case B-170, specialty pool and spa, requested variance to waive with the increase the maximum allowable impervious surface from 35% to 40%. In land lot 23 of the 16th district. The property is located at the northern terminus of Canopy Drive, north of Jamison Road, and south of Cherokee Avenue. Staff recommends approval, subject to stormwater management comments. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to V-170? <coughs> Let the record show there's no one opposed, and that completes the 
Senator and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman and Board. Okay, it's back to this board for discussion with the exception of uh, V140 and the exception of V163. The clerk is trying to make an attempt to uh, reach these folks that are not here. Uh, V140 is not going to show. They're not going to be here, okay? And the other one is 163. 163. 163. 163. Okay. Well, with the exception of V140 and with the exception of V163, I'll entertain a motion or discussion on any of those uh, cases. All right. Entertain a motion. I make the motion that we approve. The consent agenda, with the exception of V140 and V163. I'll second that. I've got a motion. I have a second. No other discussion. I'll call for the vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ladies and gentlemen, that carries for approval 5 to 0. Now, um, when, uh, the V140, that they're not going to be here, did they give a reason? Uh, Judy, at this point, we're just going to continue. continue. Okay. We'll just continue. Yes, we need a motion on each of those to, to continue those cases. Judy, give me a motion on each one individually. Okay. Um, I make a motion that we continue V140 and V163. I'll second that. A second for both uh, V40 and <clears throat> 163. Mm -hmm. No other discussion. Call for the vote. All in favor signify by saying aye, aye. Any opposed? Madam Clerk, we are going to continue V40 and V163 until our next scheduled meeting. Who will? Um, 66. 166. I think well, John. Yeah, that's John. Okay. Okay. That's fine. All right. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to business. It's Christmas. Your business is complete with us for a day. You're welcome to stay or you're welcome to leave. If you leave, please leave quietly. It is Christmas. Go spend some money in, in Cobb County. It's a beautiful day to go play golf. I never, I don't get a chance to say that in December too often. <laughs> <laughs> but enjoy the day. So if you leave, please leave quietly. And as you're going, we will start our next case, John. Yes, sir. Variance case V82, Philip Wallace. Request a variance to allow an accessory structure and approximately 340 square foot portable carport to be to the side of the principal building. Allow parking and or access to the parking areas in a residential district to be on a nod hardened surface reduced required uh, amount of public road front from 75 feet to 34 feet and a reduced rear setback for the carport from 35 feet to 18 feet in landlot 76 of the 18th district the property is located on the north side of francis circle west of garner road is the applicant present let the record show the applicant is here is there anyone here opposed to variance case v82 let the record show there's no one opposed would the applicant please come forward to be sworn in is this the one you're going to hold? All right. Is this the one you're going to hold? Yeah. Don't let him make a presentation. Then. Uh, I've announced to everybody. <laughs> Transparency is that pretty good. Philip, uh, for the record, give me your name, please, first. Uh, Philip Wallace. Okay, now, Philip, we have held this case for a number of months. Can you bring us up to date? We don't need to go back through the whole thing. Just give us an update on where you are right now. Um, <clears throat> actually, I thought I was going to come here today because I'm looking at the names, and I just spent an hour and a half at UPS trying to get a copy of the emails that I sent to each of you guys, and they couldn't help me print them out, so I had to forward it to them. But um, I really can't, um, if I can just take this off the table because my house is, deteriorating every day when it rains I'm like please don't let there become mold and this right here I, I can't do and I just um, I kind of sent you guys an email but this is I had to forward the same email that I sent to each of you to the UPS store if you want to see what it okay said or anything. Philip, I, I, I just don't have any I can't commit to a driveway right now okay um, uh, you and I spoke yesterday in length and uh, you did explain to me that you have sent everybody emails we did we never received them mr peterson didn't receive them so uh before you leave today we'll we'll make sure some one of our staff members will give you correct 
uh, information on how to email Mr. Peterson, and Mr. Peterson could distribute the rest of us. Uh, I, I, in our discussion that you and I had yesterday, it, it is Christmas time. You are you're in the postal service, so obviously you're busy. You explained some of your financial hardships. I understand that. Let me at this time. Let me do this. I have rethought this, and uh, one of the thoughts that I have, and just bear me out for a second, is that garage can be moved. Five people can pick that up and move that. I was just wondering. Um, why that couldn't be moved over onto your existing uh, driveway and placed there. That would eliminate a, a variance on that side of the house. You would call for a variance on the other side of the house, but that's just one option. Here's my suggestion. Let's continue this case for another three months. We're gonna give you a little three more months on this, and that you and I and code enforcement will meet on your property within the next month and a half and we'll try to discuss that together on the property and see what we can do to help you. How does that sound to you? That sounds fine. I mean, if, if I mean, it's like, I really would like to be, you know, like I said, I purchased the property as is, even when you look at cores, everything that's there has been there since they've been taking photographs of the property. I understand, yes sir. I do apologize that, I mean, it's like I bought something that has become a cumbersome on me financially. And like I said, initially I don't have Walmart money and I can move the structure over, but as, as it stands now, you know, I want, I would like to, because there are people that are, um, I would like to allow an opportunity to stay there and, and, and I just need more than a place to park more than two vehicles. Okay, well, let's let's discuss that. Let's go ahead and we'll, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll continue this case until May. That way it gives you a little more opportunity to put some money in the bank. Again, I will have code enforcement, myself and Mr. Peterson. We will all meet on your property to help you in whatever way that we can to try to work and get this thing done. That would be perfect. And, and one of the reasons I'm doing this, your house is one of the nicest houses in the neighborhood. And uh, I think you've had, you've, as you've indicated this board before, you've had financial problems. And it is Christmas time and we want to work with you. I do appreciate it, but yeah, I've been in this house for a while. Okay, Thank let's you. okay, let's not say any more. Let's do that, and we'll get everybody together. You can you can turn that over to Mr. Peterson before you leave today. Okay. Thank All you right. So much. I have a question, Miss Williams. In the spirit of giving, uh, why can't we just approve it? I can't, Judy. I can't until it's done. I have I do have some serious opposition down there, and uh, I, it, it, we, we would set a precedent if we didn't have a hard surface in that particular area. Okay. So. Uh, it, the, the enforcement's there, and I've got to I've got to deal with it one way or the other. Any other comments from board members? All right, I want to make a motion that we hold this case until our well, May uh, May meeting. Came uh, into existence. Mr. Peterson, hold on. John, is that okay? Is that a motion? Fine. Matter of fact, because I was went to the media, the, the county cleaned up the property next to me. So with the same property that this organization is trying to get federal tax dollars. Uh, well, no, wait, pay. you're getting into a whole other I thing. I can't, I can't get into I've, I struggled to be there and to have this neighborhood look nice and now to be forced gentrified out is just not fair. But I'll give my information to Mr. Peterson. Mr. Peterson. Okay. I've got a motion. Can I get a second? A second. Is second, Ms. Swanson. And no other comments. Call for the vote. All in favor signify by saying aye, aye. Any opposed? We're going to approve that until our hold that case until our next uh, meeting in May. Okay, and we we will be in touch. Thank you, Thank you sir. And Merry Christmas to you. Oh, appreciate it. Happy New Year. And that's May you. 11, 2016. May the 11th. Okay, John, help me out. Where am I? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. One sixty-seven, I believe. Yes, sir. Okay. Variance case V167, Karen M. Puckett. <clears throat> request the variance to uh, waive the rear setback from required 40 feet to 15 feet adjacent to the eastern property line uh, to increase the maximum allowable uh, fence height in front or to the side of the house in a residential district from 6 feet to 10 feet in landlot 756 of the 16th district. The property is located on the east side of Spring Circle, east of Bishop Lake Road. Is the applicant present? That director show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V167? Let the record show there's two people opposed. All those wishing to address the board, please come forward to be sworn in.
All right, sir, for the purpose of the record, before you get started, if you would, please give us your name. My name is Kemp Puckett. Okay, if you would, uh, Mr. Puckett, tell us what you want, sir. Okay, uh, I have a fence that's been existing for two years that's between a fence along my property line that's been there for two years. And uh, parts of it are over or at 10 feet high. And now my neighbor's complaining about it uh, so do you have anything i notice you have a survey is there anything you want to put up on the board to show us or uh yes if, uh, this this young man right here can help you with that uh, this gentleman right here can help you with that okay He could put that up, and then we can get that up on the screen, and, and you can we'll get a, give you a pointer and a microphone, and then you would, you could explain to us what you've got, what you want to do. that's a little dark too yeah that, that one may not matter too much that's just showing that there are uh... there we go our subdivision was laid out in like 1930 so a lot of the lots are smaller than they need to be for right. zoning and so forth uh, my lot is number 13 that's where the F is on there And the fence line would be between uh, the fence line. <laughs> the fence line is is along this property line here. And your lot is thirteen. Point point to your lot. Here. Okay. All right, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay, the this plant shows uh, the one that in my variance folder. Yes, yeah, sir. We have a copy of that. Okay, it shows the this is my house. This is my neighbor's house. Their uh, deck is really close right here. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, when be before they bought the house. I had built this fence from right about there down to the lake. Now, we give you a pointer. We'll give you that pointer. You can point at the other piece uh, that's on the screen. section of the fence was built from here down to the lake and there's uh, there's the fence is put in it's kind of in panels and there's four panels that the top the highest part is 10 foot because of the property drop yes sir in the eight foot section the property drops about a foot for each eight foot that of travel and uh, so that fence was was there when my, the Langley, my neighbors moved in, and uh, they said they liked the fence. And later on, we wanted to build a fence from that section up to the front, and they said they didn't have a complaint with that, and we built it. That was uh, uh, September of. Uh, 2013 and uh, it's been there ever since okay so this year uh, on 9 18 
I got in a code compliance uh, issue. Said my fence was too high. Yes, sir. And uh, they think the fence is 10 feet high and that it's uh, possibly blocking the view from their kitchen window out towards the lake. And uh, so I went to a homeowners association. They had no complaints. I have a letter with them. They said they didn't have an issue with the fence as it is or with whatever <coughs> you guys recommend we do with it. Then uh, I had some pictures. Okay. This this picture kind of shows the first section of the fence that I think they're mainly complaining about. That's ten feet high. Uh, this fence is actually it's a, a about eight foot six on this side and right at nine foot where okay. this tree is. Okay. Now this is just past that. It's nine feet here and 10 feet here. And then it goes nine feet, 10 feet, nine feet, 10 feet. Uh, that was pretty much the same picture. This, this picture here shows uh, the first corner I don't know if you can see the, uh, I put numbers on there to show the height. If you don't, uh, it's, well, tell us what it is. It's, uh, that's where it's eight foot six at the top, and then it goes over to the other end. It's right at nine foot. Okay. And then the, these next pictures just kind of follow that same section I was okay. talking about then. <clears throat> okay. This picture uh, kind of shows how much the property drops from their their side down to my side. It, it, that, in other words, that the short fence here is, is running from the long fence down towards my house. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. <laughs> I was trying to show how the, the fence is the top of it. I guess we did the decorative side on their side also. And so we look at the framing on the back side. Okay, that one. All right, Mr. Puck, you got two minutes left. Anything else okay. you want to tell this us? This picture shows the, what they would be looking at outside of their kit, from their kitchen window straight out. That's uh, my house there. The next picture it would be where the second section of the fence is across, is at 10 foot at the highest point. Third picture, same thing. It's trying to show that we're not really blocking the lake view out that side. And same thing there. We don't need that one, I don't think. Okay, this picture shows the the side of their house. Can you get it down a little lower? I'd like to see that on the picture. That's what what my view towards their house is. Okay. And uh, these pictures this picture is what's behind the fence. Is this your property or their property? Their property. Okay. The next picture is the same. Okay. Uh, this picture is, is the, the fence at the front of the property where the mailboxes are, and that's their side. not there now okay your time is about up anything else you want to sum <clears throat> up uh, I think that's that's about it uh, okay all right sir thank you if you would just have a seat and at this okay. time we'll hear from the opposition all right.
Okay, for the purpose of the record, if you would please give us your name, please, first. Joseph Langley. And Shannon Langley. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, go ahead, tell us what you want to tell us. Yeah, so um, he, he's right, they did build the fence roughly two years ago, um, which is roughly two to three months after we closed on the house. Okay. Um, before we had bought the house, they actually um, owned that house as well. Um, they, they used to live in that house and then they built the house next door. Um, and, and then once we closed the house and bought the house from the Puckets and uh, his siblings, um, then they built the fence right after, right after we closed. Um, there was a small portion of the fence that was there. But... Right, it actually wasn't, where it, where it kind of takes a curve down towards the lake, that was existing there, but the higher sections were what was added after we closed. Um, we, we, we never at any time gave any approval uh, for them to um, to keep the fence and didn't really under, you know we're not home builders we don't understand codes and things like that um, but we do have a couple of uh, but you, you kind of saw from the lot how he's right very very very, very close quarters you know, we've got a really beautiful lake one of the prettiest areas of Cobb County that there uh, of Bishop's Lake the you know one of the more prettier areas of Cobb County and if you have 10 foot fences on our properties then you can't see the lake from either <coughs> side and, you know if they put a 10 foot fence over here then you wouldn't be able to see the the views and we don't want a precedent set for the neighborhood where you can now build 10 foot fences we would just like the um the fence to conform to the the code set out by by the Cobb county code of i believe in this case is six feet um you know, and, and, and it's very, very, because I don't know if you saw in, in one of those pictures, but you can see the very, very top of two of our windows on the side of the house where the, the windows are, are, are just peeking up over the fence. Um, you know, when you're standing in the house, all you see is fence. Um, I don't know if things got... Ours are our... totally, like ours are taken actually from inside the kitchen window, yeah. which I 100% disagree with his picture of my kitchen view. So this was um, taken this morning of my kitchen, looking out the window. And when we originally bought the home, you could see out and see the lake and the other homes. And um, and then the fence was built. And so, oh, I think there's gonna be a glare. But, so when we look out, basically, we see fence. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of see it. That's, that's directly out of the window. Um, I don't know if you can tell Yeah, we can see it. We can see it. Yeah, I mean, you just see the fence there. And right. if it was four feet shorter, then... Um, we can show what it... Yeah, then you can I actually see. stood up on um, our the, balcony. Let, this is, like, just looking out that's towards from the, the side lake. Deck, uh, I guess the same angle. I don't know how he got pictures um, from our deck. But... Um, and then this is, uh, you know, another where you can see the, the fence line here. And this is kind of at the level of our um, our window. This was me standing on our yeah. our banister to look over the fence so that I could show you what our view was when we first bought the house. And is that your neighbor's house? It's across, the, yes. It's, yeah, and it's the, not their house, it's just a, a And this is the neighbors. Neighbor. There's, there's other lots and other, there's a neighbor here and a neighbor there and you know they didn't bother building the fence over there you know but there's plenty of houses but you can see the open space there is the lake so at one time we could look out the kitchen window and see the lake okay well anything else um no, no no that's it i mean we just um we just feel that you know there's codes for a reason um you know especially in an area like ours you know it's not you know a normal subdivision we do lucky enough to have a beautiful lake and and want to be able to preserve that and the views that um uh, that we have and just want the uh, you know any fence built to conform to the codes that that you guys set out it's just very obstructive it was actually built right on the property line maybe just a few inches off the actual property line so where we live it's just it's very tight and um, and it's obstructive that's the best word I could use to describe so thank you for your time and consideration I, 
anything else you want to say, sir? No. Okay. All right. I declared a public session over, and at this time, I'm going to ask Ms. Kim Swanson, who represents the district, to lead us in the discussion. Ms. Swanson? <clears throat> um, I actually have, I guess, Mr. and Mrs. Langley, can you please come up for a second, please? John, uh, while we're waiting on the Langleys to come up, what does the code call for in Cobb County? What's the height on a fence? To the front or side of a house, the maximum height is uh, six feet. Six feet. To the rear, it could be as high as eight feet. To the rear, it's eight feet, okay? That's right, just for clarification. All right, Ms. Swanson. Um, I don't have a picture that um, Mr. Puckett had displayed, but when you're looking at his fence and you're looking at your house, so I'm looking at his fence here and I'm looking at your house, which window is your kitchen? Um, it's the one on the left. Uh, there's actually two windows. One um, uh, comes from, you know, uh, kind of like a side room. And then one comes from the kitchen. It would be the the one on the on the left. It's the very first window. So the side the of the very first is window, here. right? So it's the very first window. And then you have your chimney sort of in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then your other window is a. What is the other window? A it, closet. It, yeah, area. it's like a utility room. It's a closet. You know, kind of, it's a very very small house, so we have to use our space wisely. <laughs> so it's a lot of different stuff. Right? Okay, and then. Um, you do from your yard, from your backyard and your um, deck that is above the fence as it goes down, correct? You do have a deck and then you have the view. Your property goes down to the lake, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And so you have a view from the lake. Of the, the back of your house basically has a view from the lake to yes. the lake. Yes. And then on the other side of your property, do you have a view from your other windows to the lake or are you looking into something else so, looking yeah, into the house next to us yeah one is uh, uh one, one comes from a bathroom and one comes from a very small window um on the side so they're not necessarily windows that you would normally look out um out of the back window we do have have one um <coughs> so you know again it, it's it's um it, it's a small area but, you know but when you're you know, in, in the in the kitchen, uh, you know, doing dishes or, or whatever, looking out the window, we would prefer to not see just the fence. Well, I think women. No, that's okay. I just agree. I'll ask the questions, then and then you can answer. So if you don't mind, I'll just ask you a question. And just answer that question, not to go on. I have um, another concern because I did go out um, to see the property uh, a couple weeks ago, and I do have some concerns with. Um, on the other side of the fence is is the items that you have stored and some just some trash items out is there is there any possibility or do you have any place because I didn't go on to your property because you weren't um, I, I don't see that unless the person is home um, is there any stories that you have other than between the fence and your decking to put well first of all your your garbage and then Second of all, any of these other miscellaneous things that he had a picture of that I actually saw? Yeah, the the one is a, a wood a wood pile for the burning stove. For the burning stove. Um, and then Which is covered with the tarp. And I guess that was trash day. That's where they pick up the trash because that part of the fence is actually right next to the road. Um, and we um, that's where we leave it uh, when they pick up the trash that day. Does that trash stay out as you accumulate it? Do you? Because it, it didn't. It, it appears to me that you didn't. You over. It was an overflow of your trash bin. It was. Uh, sometimes that happens. Yeah. Sometimes we. <laughs> We're you a know, family got of five. Kids and um, we had a, a big trash week uh, that week. But there was a couple weeks where we had a birthday party. Uh, we we do have problems with in, in that area. It's kind of the um, forgotten part of Cobb County sometimes and. Uh, sometimes the the trash guy doesn't come. There's been a couple of weeks where the trash guy doesn't come, um, and then you know, usually, uh, I'd say 99% of the time we're able to stay within uh, the container. But if he doesn't come that week, outside of driving it out um, uh, to West Cobb, uh, 
Okay. Th there is not a another uh, trash area to put all in. All right, thank you. Um, that's all that I have right now. Does anybody have any questions I was going to bring up? Uh, no, Mr. Think... Puckett. Mr. A quick question. I'm sorry. Okay. Can I ask them? Um, you mentioned that the fence was built shortly after you moved in. Um, did you just not realize that it was out of compliance at the time? Or I'm wondering why it took a while to decide to, no to ask. We had no idea. We, we didn't that you know could at call. the time uh, that um, you know that the work codes. Um, that, that we, we didn't understand what the the code was at the time. I mean, okay. you know, I, I don't know. And to be honest with you, we thought it was eight feet. <laughs> yeah, but it we ended thought up it was eight six, feet. So, so apparently six see. feet. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, folks, you can go ahead and have a seat now. Okay, thank you. Do we have anything from code enforcement as to what prompted code enforcement to come, Mr. Peterson? Um, I did not bring anything with me, Commissioner Swanson, but it, it was a complaint. Okay. And do you do you know who who complained? Why it was brought forward? Uh, Were no, there other know. issues that code code enforcement was there as, for as other issues? Know, as far as I know, it's just a fence issue. It was just a fence. Okay. Um, Mr. Puckett, could you please come up, back up? Please. Hi, how are you? Um, can you can you do me a favor? I understand how your I was I was there at the property and and, and I was lamely walking around the property and how it, it does dip down very quickly down to the lake and your fence structure goes goes down with with that um, grade but um, can you put up I have this picture here and I just want the section that they're talking about that ends um, at the back of their house and then goes um, along towards the front of their house do you have that picture please yeah. Well, it doesn't go all the way to the front of the house, so it's just. You want the other section? Right, I want the other section, and Mr. Puckett has the other section. Give that to Cornelia. So, this is the back of this house. So on this on this picture here, I was just looking at the fence. Cornelius, can you move it? Oh, that's good. I was just looking at the fence here, this portion here, that goes um, past their utility room closet. I believe that's what they said. Yeah. And then that fence then continues at that line all the way to the front. And is that portion of the fence how tall is that again? Yeah, it's a right there where it's at the end of the house right because the, it, it's a prop, it's 10 feet there but if you go all the way to the front of the house it's like eight foot and six inches so it's 10 feet here and then it's gonna drop down to yeah, eight when feet you go to up the front the spring circle the top is level but the, the ground raises up and then it kind of levels out like that uh, the window you can see the heights of the windows they can see over that fence there and the where it's 10 feet high there the handrail on their walkway that goes back there is maybe a foot lower than that top of that fence there and as the pictures when you look at the pictures up it makes it look like the fence is covering more of the, more of the window than it actually is do you have a picture of the one, the fence that covers their what they say is their kitchen? Is that, is that their kitchen? Pardon? Is that their kitchen? The kitchen one is behind that curtain. <coughs> is the kitchen so window is one. just about behind the tree, maybe a little bit to the right side of it? And the there again the the 
if you were standing on the other side of the fence where the picture with the bicycles is, the handrail on that fence is probably six feet high. Okay, so when I look at this picture. I mean, the handrail on their, their walkway across there. Right. So the top of their window, you could see out over it. Okay, so when I look at this picture, can you show me where six feet would be? Like, take that whole section and kind of, uh, kind of mark out if if you if we had you comply with our code um, to six feet can you show show us approximately where six feet would go along this section this is eight it's eight at the front it's eight at the front and ten at the back so it's kind of going that, right yeah the <coughs> It's eight feet here, and it's nine feet right here, and then it's uh, where this section goes down is, is the drop. The property, well, if behind this tree right here, is be where it's about ten feet, where that little fence comes in there, right here. So, but this oh. the fence that's in the fence that we're having the issue with, from my understanding, we talked about this was that it's this fence that we're looking at that's going up what appears going up to the lower part of their um, roof line. So if we drop that section down six feet, where is six feet? Two six feet. Or two six feet, where would that be? Where would six foot height? Point out where six feet would be on there. Right there, right there would be six feet? Yeah. And then, then again, I'll be looking at the bicycles and stuff that they store on Walkway. And you would look then at his, if you did the six feet, then you would be looking at the bottom of his deck, deck rail. You had uh, showed the picture, this picture. the top of the, the handrail, probably. You'll be looking at his handrail. You have this picture, point. Mr. Puckett. You have this pic picture. Can you put that up, please? You want this to be it? put up? I the, guess if you can't find get it. That over here. probably right at seven feet if you were standing uh, there where the where the leaves are right point yeah. to us point can you point to it please where you would say six feet is so six feet would probably be around in here somewhere okay um i've been i've been working for for a lot of years with variances coming coming out of the Bishop Lake area, and and it's an area that um, was built way before we had, Cobb County had code, and um, I would say probably, I'd say probably 85 to 90% of the homes there have some sort of um, code violation because of the nature of the area, how it was built, these homes just strangely fit in on these properties. The properties have different sizes, um, and and with that, one home has a beautiful lake of one, a beautiful view of one part of the lake, 
and the other home is given up another part of the view because of the way it's situated. And this is clearly a situation where a home was built after this home was in existence and then it came to the side so and it and it's sitting on a on an area that that drops rather quickly down to the lake which a lot of these homes do as well and then even to the Langley's um, picture of a view of a home that wrapped onto the circle and is blocked even more of their view of this entire lake picture is the home that they showed that they directly look at that's past your backyard to to this other home so not I don't think that there are very many homes in this area that um, have a full command of the lake um, I think that there needs to be some um, compromise done on <coughs> both both of these parties the Langley's and and the Puckett's as to something that would be reasonable um, 10 feet I think is a little is not that reasonable but I think that there can be a compromise because I think that coming down to uh, what the code is of six feet um, is not reason reasonable either um, I think that the Langleys have some issues because their house is so small and they have five people living there. I'm sure there's some issues of storage because I, I know that their house is very small from what I could see on the outside, that they have issues of storage. So, and I don't believe you have a garage. So um, that portions of the deck, the underneath part of the deck is becoming sort of one person storage unit. Um, and then the, the Puckett's, Built, built the fence, I think, to um, to cover them having to look, when they sit out on their deck, are they in their yard, to have to look what's under, what's under as a storage unit under the Langley's deck. So I believe that um, I would like to make a motion and then, and then um, open it for discussion, but my motion would be that we continue V167 um, until um, February um, 2016, and that <coughs> the Langleys and the Puckets meet, and since you're neighbors, and have a discussion. I know that the Homeowners Association, which is the the BZA does not usually go to the homeowners associations, but with the um, with this with this area, Bishop Lake, we have been using the homeowners association rather consistently for their approval. Or, or if they don't approve, they have no they have no they don't feel um, they don't care what's going to come out of this meeting. It, it's up to to us to make the decision so they don't approve it and they don't um, deny this so with that I think that the two family the two parties could work out some sort of a compromise and um, and on both sides mr. mr. Puckett could look at bringing his fence down to something that I think would be reasonable again I don't think six feet is reasonable and the Langleys can look at where the fence would give you whatever view of the lake that you would that you would like or that you could possibly see out of your kitchen window which is a small window and still be able to cover what is um, under the deck so that's my motion all right I've got a motion I need a second on that motion I'll second for discussion. second for discussion okay now we're in discussion period mr. Thank you. Comment? Uh, Mr. Peterson, I just want to make sure I understand. You said the code says uh, maximum six feet on the sides and eight feet to the rear. Is that correct? It's six feet maximum to the front or to the side of the house and eight feet in the back of the house. Okay, front and side. Okay, so my question is for the Puckett house, uh, what's the front and what's the back? Just, just for reference. The Puckett house faces uh, the Langley house. So the front of the house, it's for the kind Puckett of an odd 
configuration because their front faces their side. I understand. The puckets, the front, okay, so the front of the pucket house faces the side. So the maximum fence So the front of the pucket house is where the driveway is. Excuse me? The front of the pucket house is where the driveway is coming into the house. That's right. That's correct. Yeah, okay. Which would constitute a six foot fence by the ordinance. Is that correct? That, that's okay. all I'm trying to establish. Okay. okay. I haven't said that. I understand from just having driven around and looked at a lot of the lots in uh, the Bishop Lake area that there are all kinds of uh, very interesting constructs, if you will. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. Other comments? Christy, Christy's very familiar with yes. Bishop Lake. Yes. As we um, all are, yeah. Just for clarification, I think, are we continuing till February? Or yes, till okay. February. Not January. Not January till February to, um, I'm gonna be stepping down from the board um, to take another position and so the person who will be replacing me I'd like to give her the opportunity that to have one month in January it's a heavy caseload and hopefully in February it'll be less and give her um, kind of on board with the cases before something like this comes about and I think that um, that'll give them time to to have a thorough discussion and so it was sort of my rationale. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, because we don't have zoning in, February, in January, so I thought, well, maybe she yeah, thought we didn't have this in wrong. January. <laughs> um, and then the only other thing I'll say is, you know, backing up, I know the fence has been there two years. Um, for whatever reason, you know, it's just now a code enforcement issue, but these variance decisions are based on hardships, so there really needs to be a, a stated hardship and um, something the Langley said makes sense to me, and that is the precedent. Um, if everybody, not just in Bishop Lake, but if every um, residential home had an eight or 10 foot fence in the front of the house, how would that affect streetscapes and so forth? So just think about that over the mm -hmm. whole period. We really do need a hardship stated next time. Yes, I'm, uh, can I say something? Well, we're, there's no rebuttal. You get okay. your 10 minutes, right. you get no, your shot. You. Let me just kind of sum this up. This is a no-win situation for, for everybody. Uh, Mr. Puckett, you're, you're out of code, period. It, and a violation has been cited. We have to do something about it. We have the authority to do what we want to do about it. But as it's been brought up, Bishop Lake was developed back in the late 20s, early 30s. Uh, it is a hodgepodge of all kinds of variances. We have worked closely throughout the years to build houses up on stilts, to go higher, to go lower. We've done all kinds of things. There's all kinds of septic problems out there. There's sewer problems out there. We're aware of that. But we've tried to work with every situation that's come in. I think in this case that two level-headed families can get together and compromise by discussion and you got a two month period to do that you're going to have to give and they're going to have to give and everybody's going to have to try to get along so i think that's what the goal of miss swanson is at this time and i fully support in that mm -hmm. any other final comments so john the way we're going to leave this is we're going to hold this we're going to hold this case for two months uh, once we take the vote, uh, that these folks are going to get together. Do we need to be involved in any discussion with these two different families, or we're going to stay out of that, Miss Swanson? I don't think it's. I, I think the discussion. I think that will be up to the district. Um, well, BZA I think a member, and if she wants to have the involvement with. And also, Mr. Staff. Peterson could be the the go between or the wealth of information for both parties. But let's put our thinking hats on, and uh, in the spirit of the holidays, let's get this done by February. I've got a motion. I've got a second. Any other discussion? Not hearing any. I'll call for the vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, Madam Clerk, we're going to hold this case for 60 days until our February meeting. And now it'll be February 10th. February the 10th. John's right on the ball. Thank you, sir, and thank you, the Langleys. Take care of the babies. And have a nice holiday. Okay, let's go to our next one, John. Yes, sir. Variance case of V169, Johnson Ferry Baptist Church. 
Incorporated request a variance to waive the setback for a church use from uh, require 50 feet to 30 feet along the sub uh, the suburbly property line and to allow accessory structure to the side of the primary structure and land lot 67 of the first district. Property is located on the west side of Johnson Ferry Road and on the east side of Woodlawn Drive. The applicant's representative is present. Is there anyone here opposed? The variance case B169. That direct shows two people opposed. Two and opposition. All those wishing to address the board, please come forward to be sworn in. Okay, for the purpose of the record, sir, if you would, please give us your name. Will. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. For the record, my name is John Moore. I'm here representing Johnson Ferry Baptist Church with regard to this uh, proposed variance. Um, obviously, Johnson Ferry Baptist Church is located on Johnson Ferry Road in East Cobb. And what we're asking for is a variance for a side setback and a structure located to the, to the side of a, a, a structure, both. And I think the place to start is um, what, let me just show you on here where we are and then we'll talk about what occurred. And Mr. Jerry Maxfield, with business administrator with the church is here to help me in case you have a question I can't answer. So. <clears throat> this is Johnson Ferry Baptist Church, I mean uh, Johnson Ferry Road right here. This is the church. <clears throat> This is Ms. Hurt's property, this light gray piece right here. Uh, and this is the area we're talking about right here. Um, and the, the idea was to put, there are four dumpsters out there and there are um, tools and other things that are used by the church to maintain their property and to put their trash in. So what they wanted to do was to build a, a building, storage building to put uh, all their tools and stuff that are sitting cones and everything else that are sitting outside inside so it looks better and replace the four dumpsters with a comp trash compactor and the reason for it being situated here is in proximity to the church they can get there and take their trash to uh, instead of the dumpsters now it will be the trash compactor this piece up here if you can focus on that is a blow up of the area I just showed you, uh, just so you can see better area. And what you have to remember is that Johnson Ferry Baptist, I mean Johnson Ferry Road is up here on the top. But this is the dumpster area, this is the church over here, and this is Miss Hurt's property right here. Uh, the blue is the building, storage building, uh, and then the compactor will go uh, right in front of that uh, storage building behind a fence, a fence goes around the back of this, and I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. Uh, <clears throat> and then this landscaping, um, we talked to Ms. Hurt and her attorney and worked out we're going to replace some landscaping along the border uh, with us, take out some old landscaping, put in some new hollies and stuff for her, um, and uh, spruce up the landscaping as it is over here and back here, all of that. Um, <clears throat> and let me show you. Switch the photographs. Now. Making sure that uh, Cornelius earns his Christmas bonus. Okay, this is the, what you see there is the building, and 
if you see those two little white, these little things here, here, and here, those are dumpsters that are dark green. You can't tell that's what those are, but that's what those are. And these are some cones, and this is a, um, a metal storage building that will also be removed as part of this. So all this entire area here, the intent is to clean all this up and certain the cones. And so what they did is they uh, proposed to um, build this building and they had their church staff do that. And then they were, a building inspector came by and said, how big is this building? And they said, and he said, you need a permit, which they didn't have. So they stopped work without a stop work order, without anything, they just stopped where they were. But you see it's almost 95% or 90% complete as it sits. Uh, and until we could have this meeting. And I said we conferred Ms. Hurt and her attorney, and uh, they consented, and we filed our, uh, Ms. Hurt's consent. And there's no other property owner other than her uh, that is in proximity to this in any regard. And uh, <clears throat> so what we are proposing to do is this is shows a fence that you can see in that picture, but you couldn't see because we were so far away. There's a white fence that runs along beside um, that building, and it goes behind the building as well um, this, in the same way. And this is a picture showing it turning the corner and going behind the building, hide the building from people that drive down beside the church. If you remember from the prior diagram we showed you the site plan, the church is immediately on the, we're like standing here beside the church looking at that side fence so everybody understands. So it hides that as well. Uh, and then the landscaping is on the other side. Um, <clears throat> the issue came up, and this picture is taken from Johnson Ferry Road looking toward the storage building. <clears throat> um, it was Johnson Ferry Road, make sure I'm looking at it, is right here. We're standing right as you come in the drive on Johnson Ferry Road, and this is the storage building and the fence down here. And there's parking along here. Um, the compactor, as I told you before, sits in that inside the fence um, <clears throat> in the front. If you understand what I'm talking about, if I, then you point. Remember from that, okay? Um, and the idea was um, to. We think the parking there's some trees down there that help block the view uh, as you stand on John, but you can see the building if you drive by. And so what we are proposing to do um, <coughs> is to propose some stipulations we think will handle, um, and I made Miss Lori a copy of those, so she won't have to try to keep up with me, um, <coughs> to handle the, the issues about the building, what we're doing with the building, and so forth. I think you'll get the gist when I read these in the record. But uh, the first one is that we agree to place a sign on the compactor that states the material part. Please check inside before operating to make sure there's nothing. Um, and an additional safety note this compactor has double doors on the front where you feed it. Uh, if, um, if those doors are open, it won't operate. In other words, you can't, while it's running, open the doors and get in because it won't let, it'll shut down automatically and it takes a key to turn it on so you can't walk over there and, uh, <clears throat> and flip a switch and um, there was concern about children from the daycare coming over and getting right. involved and so it's got many safety features to it and that's one we think <clears throat> we also uh, the second one states the applicant agrees to work with the Cobb County Arborist but provide additional vegetative screening for the building and compactor is viewed from Johnson Ferry Road we think that in the area where there's already landscaping in the island, as you see going down that parking area, that we can plant additional screening vegetation that will help screen that from the street as well, uh, even though it's difficult to see. We also agreed that we would not operate the, uh, well, said applicant agrees not to operate the compactor prior to 9 a.m. or after uh, 9 p.m. in the evening. Uh, we have events there this building is cleaned at night, and so we need to use the compactor till then, but that should be a sufficient amount of time to be able to do that. Um, and then the next, number four, states there, be, there shall be no repairs of vehicles or equipment within the proposed building. Um, 
It's just for storage. And the last is uh, we agree, applicant agrees to remove the existing dumpsters, tools, cones, metal storage buildings, building and the like from the area once the building has been completed and the compact, compactor is in place. So we think with these, it makes it a presentable issue uh, proposition. <coughs> it's certainly better than the way it is today. Uh, you don't have the dumpsters, you don't, the noise, compactors are fairly quiet because you have them inside of grocery stores, you have them inside apartment buildings, inside the building. We have one inside our building. You really don't hear them. Um, they don't make near as much noise as you might think. Certainly not as much as dumping a dumpster. So we think this will be a much better alternative. Um, <clears throat> and I know that uh, East Cobb Civic Association sent in an opposition. I did uh, speak with them and I think <coughs> they haven't seen these stipulations and we haven't talked about those, but uh, they were raising what the hardship. The hardship is how you get this needed um, <coughs> cleanup and compactor instead of dumpsters in proximity to the church where it's going to be used from and there's no other place to put it. In other words, if, if you look at the site plan, there is no other place uh, to put it that's a better location than this one. And uh, I think we think further away is problematic from, from a lot of reasons, accessibility, crime, um, vandalism, and the like. So we think that they're in light of the hardship. I know my time is up. So <clears throat> as I say, Mr. Maxfield and I are here but we think with these stipulations um, and being presented with what we have, and Mr. Maxfield um, has promised me, <laughs> as I conveyed to Ms. Swanson, that should an issue ever come up about building anything on, on their property, he's gonna call me first to make sure whether we need a permit or not. So I think uh, the lesson's been learned. Thank you very right. much. Thank you, Mr. Moore. At this time, we'll, we'll hear from the opposition. <clears throat> Right, sir, if you would start off by give us your name, please. First. Good afternoon. I'm Doug Davis with the East Cobb Civic Association, case manager for V seat 169. We have several concerns of, with V169. <clears throat> we understand that the adjacent resident does not object to this variance. However, that does not reduce our concerns for that resident or the community that, that rides by Johnson's Ferry Road every day. The building was built by church members without regard to the surrounding community, <coughs> without regard to the Cobb County Code. It was built under the false misunderstanding that no building permit was required and the setback was 25 feet. The Cobb County Code is public record. It's online for all to read. There are no utilities in the building today. What's going to prevent electric, adding electrical and water inside and outside? Maybe an office space in the future. There's no screening from the community. It's very visible from Johnson Ferry Road. Two white overhead doors. It towers over the fence that is supposedly screening the side and the back. The photo that Mr. Moore showed, it's way above the fence level. The architecture is not similar to the other ch church architecture. Makes it stand out even more. We're concerned about the additional concrete pad on the south side of the building that's within the 30-foot requested reduced setback next to the neighbor. What's the purpose of this pad? Could it be used for additional outside storage for equipment, storage bins? Will this space be used to repair equipment since there's no electricity in the building? Add a roof and it becomes dry storage. The ramp in front of the building can be used to drive loud yard equipment in and out of the building or onto the concrete pad next to the neighbor. 
the additional concrete pad does not provide access to the building and we do not understand its purposes other than the above noted possible uses. This pad should not be allowed to remain without restrictions on its use. There is no hardship noted on the application, nor is there a hardship that could be determined by the ECCA. The amount of money to relocate this building is not a hardship and should not be considered in granting this variance. It was created by building the building without regard to the Cobb County Code. There are other locations on the 15.76 acre track that are available that do not violate the 50 foot setback. One final question. If this was a commercial or residential site, would this variance be granted? The ECCA recommends that V-169 be denied as there is no hardship due to the shape or the topo of the land. Thank you for your time. All right, sir, thank you. Anybody else wish to speak in opposition to case V-109? Hearing and not seeing anybody, it is back to this board for discussion. And again, uh, Ms. Kim Swanson represents the district. So Kim, lead us in the discussion, please. <clears throat> um, Mr. Moore, could you come up to the front? I need to ask you a couple more questions. Hi. Yes. Hey. You stated um, that this building, you you stopped work on the building once, um, or they stopped work on the building once they realized that they were out of compliance and that they also hadn't pulled a permit. Um, and it's 90% completed. Could you please tell me ad what additions you're gonna be doing? Because from the, from the outside, and I walked around, it looks completed. Well, I, I, this, this, this finishing touches, that's what I said, started saying 95% and I, being conservative, I said, well, 90. But there's nothing of any structural di difference in what you see now. There's going to Will be you be adding electricity and water? They're already there. Yeah. There is electricity and water there. Because yes. okay. it was noted by um, the opposition that there wasn't any. So there is electricity and water. Yes. OK. I thought I was I don't think you can run a compactor without electricity. Well, I know, but I just yeah. wanted to see if yeah. it was completed because yeah. it was stated <clears throat> it wasn't. Um, the pad that is south of the building um, that Mr. Davis spoke of, what what is going to be the use of that pad except uh, for just, I, I don't even, I don't know what you would put there if you're going well, we to just, remove We put everything. a concrete pad to put the building on. Um, and it's just bigger than the building. But the, there was a, a thought at one time of putting the compactor on that side of the building, which we did not do uh, to move it further away. So now it's going on the pad and basically to the right, if you. You see where that the trailer is on the right hand side right that's where the compactor is going to go um, and so it's further away and immediately next to that fence as well so it's we're trying to hide it as much as we can okay and that trailer that is there right now that's not going to be there correct no the trailer will be removed I, I assume it can be relocated someplace else oh it would go on the side on that pad you're talking about next to the building between there's a so then you will be using you will be using in that pad if there isn't like a no use on that pad you're going to be using the pad for for what exactly will you just be to using park the, the pad trailer for? on it and that trailer the purpose of the trailer will will you park the trailer and add more things on top of it inside the trailer what is no, it's, what is it's, the trailer use it's just you hook it to a truck and you haul it around the church when they've got all those athletic fields and all that other stuff and so they move chairs they move 
benches, they move, whatever, you know. Uh, Picks up leaves too, the winter, the fall. Like the yeah. But there, Miss Hurt also has a fence, an eight foot fence next to us. So we're in between, I don't know if that picture shows it or not, but yeah, this one does. This dark area right here is Miss Hurt's fence, okay, <clears throat> on her property. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she won't see the trailer. She won't see the building. If you you have it open, the aerial up, if you put the aerial up, you can see that her, she has a very wooded lot next to us before you ever get to her house. You can't even see her house. Um, and so she's not going to see anything. That's the reason she had no problem with what we're doing, especially when we agreed to remove a bunch of old landscaping <coughs> that she wanted to get rid of and put in new stuff. So, okay. Uh, but she's, um, she's going to be much better off because she won't hear the clang of those uh, dumpsters being emptied either, you know. Okay. And then um, the, last, the last question is that this building is going to have water and electricity and I know the church is growing, but can we put a stipulation on it that it will never be converted into any type of office space? And that would include if you have like an assigned foreman and they decide to stick him out there because that's his job over there to, to maintain the grounds, that it will never be an office Certainly. at all? Yes. Okay, so we'll add that as another stipulation okay. to your already submitted stipulations. Right. Um, and then, could you put the picture that I showed you, please? I know, um, Mr. Jamore, that we talked about um, putting in um, some landscaping that would be up to the Cobb County Arborist. Yes. And my concern wasn't so much for that strip that you show from Johnson Ferry. And this wasn't, this is me standing straight on from Johnson Ferry and your picture was coming into the driveway of Johnson Ferry so it's like however you look. I think right. that the buffer along um, the picture that you showed, I think that's that's sufficient. This is the buffering area, is the front directly facing onto Johnson Ferry. Right. This is where I would like the Cobb County Arborist to look at as well as your other area but that's this fine. is my major concern the other I think that when the trees thicken out and then you have vehicles parked there regularly um, it's pretty buffered from that angle of Johnson Ferry but is not buffered from this angle at all uh, well I even didn't when the plants no, thicken sorry. out so can we have the arborist look at this area as well I didn't specify in the stipulation which area I just said the we would get with the arborist to look to screen it from Johnson Ferry Road the way the stipulation okay. read but I just looked at Mr. Maxfield, and that'll be the, and that, the area they look at as well. So then we can leave the stipulation that it'll be screened from Johnson Ferry all all angles? Well, I wouldn't say all angles, because I don't. <laughs> why don't we say, if you want to be specific, we will, I, we can add. What it says is, just because I know I'm reading and you're not, so it says, we, we agree to work with the Cobb County Arborist to provide additional vegetative screening for the building and compactor as viewed from Johnson Ferry Road, and I can add to that. That'll that'll be sufficient. I didn't have yeah. it in front of me, so that'll be okay. sufficient. Okay. That's sufficient. That's good. Okay. Thank but, you. But we see what you're talking about, and we can tell you that that will be included in our screening okay. area. Then that's sufficient. Okay. Um, I do understand <laughs> the East Cobb Civic Association's position. Um, as Mr. Moore stated, this. Um, created a little heartburn for me because there isn't any hardship um, as far as the shape, size, and topography of the property. For this to be built, it also doesn't have a permit. So one of the, the um, I would like it to get a per permitted and um, a certificate of occupancy before you can put any equipment or or whatever you, you're gonna put into the storage building as well. Um, but I do understand the East Cobb Civic Associ Association's position and their concerns. Um, 
and, and I hope that some of the things that Mr. Moore has written in his stipulations will satisfy some of the concerns that uh, we have had um, with, this, with this storage unit. So with that, I'd like to make a motion that we approve V169 to include Mr. Moore's stipulations that he um, gave to the county clerk and that they will get this building permitted and when it's completed a certificate of occupancy before um, going in and filling up the, the building with whatever um, equipment. So I make that motion if there's any additional comments. Okay. Got a motion. I've got a second. We're in discussion. Mm -hmm. Here with Mr. Uh, Mr. Gunther. <coughs> I guess when I look at this, uh, I thought we heard that there was a hardship, but I'm hard to understand. It's hard for me to understand what that hardship is. Um, John, I think you you said what a hard you you described the hardship, right? Which, as I understand it, <clears throat> was to just simply clean up where the uh, trash bins are and so forth. And I don't really see that as a hardship. That that's one concern I have. And the other concern I have is the architectural look and feel of, of this this building. It just doesn't fit in. And it stands out. I think the white fence that uh, goes along the side and I guess the back does fit in with other somewhat similar white fences on other parts of the property. But that's the only point of consistency architecturally that I could see. So I, I have a lot of problem with uh, proving this, actually. Okay. I have All a right. couple uh, of comments. Comment, just... Ms. Uh, from Betty. Okay. Um, I felt the same way about the architecture and the need to screen from Johnson Ferry, but um, just sitting here and actually hearing the case today, I think the hardship, and I don't even know if this is the same hardship that Mr. Moore described, but one of the variances is, is to allow the accessory structure to the side instead of the rear, I guess. The rear is where it should be. Well, the rear, it would be wood lawn, I guess. Is that right, Mr. Peterson? So if you look at the area where it should be located, there's not even really anywhere to put it on the rear, and it would be on the woodlawn side instead of Johnson Ferry. So the visual impact would be the same. And then the other request um, had to do with the setbacks, and that affects primarily this residential homeowner whose property is completely surrounded by the church. So in a way, the shape and configuration of this 15 acres around that R20 could be considered um, at a minimum, I think, kind of unusual. A hardship. So, um, you know, I don't disagree about any of the concerns or the architecture. I wish it matched the church a little more, but really what we're dealing with are these two questions. And I think, um, you know, aside, if they could put it in the back, it could look however they wanted it to, I guess. So we're not really being asked to chime in on that. Ms. Williams. I think when, uh, when you look at the overall picture of Johnson's Fair, Baptist Church, it takes up and it's spread out over a large area. I think if you end up putting it in the back, you'll create more of a problem. The next door neighbor has signed off with her attorney and they're happy with it. And I think the, the things that we usually look for are if the adjacent property owner, which is Miss Hurst, is it Hurst? Hurst. 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 It, she's in agreement to it. And um, I think when I was standing at Johnson Ferry Road, there were a lot of other things that I could see too. And I think the hardship really is the fact, the shape of the lot, the way they've just added parcels to Johnson's Ferry over the years has created it. And I'd rather it be in this location than on Woodlawns. Okay, other comments? I have absolutely no comment at all. I think we've designated, shown a hardship. I think Ms. Swanson has covered all the leading points and uh, I'm fully supportive of that motion. With that said, no other comments. I'll call for the vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. All those opposed, say no. Okay, we're going to approve that four to one with Mr. Gunther descending. John, we have one more case to hear. I noticed a gentleman just came in. Has anybody uh, arrived? Uh, let's go ahead and call that case, and that gentleman can come up here.
Mr. Chairman, that is the applicant for uh, V-163. Okay, so just there, have a seat. We'll take care of so you. There's when a we procedure get that we need to follow to, re to re put that on the agenda. Yeah. So let's let's go ahead and finish this lady off, and we'll take 163 at the very end. Okay. I might mistake. Also, Dwayne Eady did come in I, during I the hearing. I noticed that. Okay. And was he was he dutifully uh, thankful that he was saved? I, I told him Merry Christmas. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> he asked me that. I said no bill. John John Moore saves the day again. John, I appreciate you helping that gentleman out. Uh, they were, uh, as Henley Van Sant would say, he was detained on it unexpectedly, and it was very kind of you to do that. So. God will be good to you. John, tell me where I am and call it out. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Variance case V142, Michelle Taylor. Request a variance to waive the exterior rear setback required 40 feet to 24 feet, which is existing. We have the side setback for an accessory structure under 144 square feet for an approximately 12 square foot block shed number one. Uh, from required five feet to 0.8 feet adjacent to the west property line. We have the side setback for an accessory structure under 650 square feet for a, an 82 square foot block shed number two required five feet to zero feet adjacent to the west property line. We have the front setback for an accessory structure uh, under 650 square feet for an 82 square foot block shed number two required 20 feet to eight feet and to allow an accessory structure uh, and approximately 12 square foot block shed number one and 82 square foot block shed number two to be to the side and front of the primary structure and Landlot 868 of the 17th District. The property is located at the northern terminus of the Hawk Court, east of Black Bear Drive. The applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V142? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Would the applicant please come forward to be sworn in? All right, ma'am, tell me your name, please, first. My name is Michelle Taylor, and I'm the owner of the property. All right, Michelle, now what I want you to do now is we heard the case last month. Ms. Watson has been fully informed and brought up to date on that. Would you tell us what's transpired since, since you were here last? Yes. Okay, what has happened, the, uh, the structures, structure A and structure B have been taken down. Well, structure A has in the front, the accessory building. Uh, we're working on structure B. The dumpster was being dropped this afternoon. Uh, David came over and we looked at the triangular section to the left of the house. Now let's, let's identify David, that's- uh, David. Braden with the stormwater yes. management yes, company. Yes, because okay, I had right. a drain easement over here. Yes, ma'am. And we had extended the deck out further than necessary, but he came out and looked at the knee wall that we had put right. up, and we adjusted the fence line accordingly. I have been granted a hold harmless. And that you have, signed off on. And okay, have given good. a copy. It's been registered in the book and everything. Yes, David has a copy. So everything that we talked about the last time we were here has been done. Okay. So hopefully I can wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> you, you'd like to get out of here quickly, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes. All right, now come on back up to the microphone uh, and just answer this. Anything else you want to tell us? Uh, I just appreciate everybody's patience and most especially all the people that I have conversed with and all this between Marietta and Cobb County okay. has been so helpful and I appreciate it. Very good. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Swanson. <laughs> Let's get it done. Um, Mr. Braden, can you come up just to, to just make sure we have this exactly right? And um, introduce yourself, ask you a question. Yes, Dave Braden with Stormwater Management Division. Um, Could I have that ahead. one picture that was just up? Yeah. Oh, the site plan? With her. I just, if you could just explain for me, please. We had talked about, about this little triangle, which would have them remove that 
um, deck that yes. would come down the wall the wall of their house right and then remove it all the way to that corner so to me that was the triangle is that still the triangle that we want removed I think they are I think they are removing the whole not just what's in the drainage easement but bringing it back to even with the side of the house so it doesn't look right. it doesn't look odd yeah. can you whose pen is that mine oh can you draw can you draw where that's going to be removed please so the deck the deck will look just like thank you very yeah, much okay and, and mr braden you're in you're in possession of the hold harmless and that satisfies i am the wall that that, that takes care of the of the concrete block wall issue right okay Okay, thank you very and much for that, that. If you could just just include my comments, which refers to removing the deck, and they're in the process of taking. I think the decking is out. They're just having to take <coughs> the, the six by six columns that are left. The right, posts. Yeah. The post. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I just so we have this all in agreement was to re to remove the two sheds. Yes. And to remove the deck where we have now drawn this little line, yes. you have the hold harmless. Um, you had a number of notice of violations that we discussed, and you understand all those have been, all those have been addressed. Prior to just, all of this, yes. And that's, they won't occur again. And um, I appreciated spending time talking with you. You've, you've been absolutely delightful, especially with all the things you had to remove. Um, so with that, I'm ready to make my motion on V142. Go right ahead. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we approve V142 and that she um, removes all of the sheds that are, are that we have um, addressed and that uh, we include the hold harmless, the release and hold harmless for the, the Cobb County water and that she agrees to remove the portion of the deck. Can we use that the, that um, plat as dated? Oh, you have that? Okay, right. I had some extra copies. Oh, awesome. So the plat that's dated today? Right. Okay, 2016. Um, and to include all staff comments, including stormwater. And one more thing. Um, Commissioner Swanson, did you just want to approve variance number one and reject variance number two, three, four, and five? Right. Oh, that's right. I forgot we had to. So we have, I, have, I make a motion that we approve variance one. Right. We, ob we object to two, three, four, and five, which those were all your. Okay. Sheds. 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 Which was Marietta. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Motion understood. All right. Do I have a second to that? Second, Mr. S Mr. Uh, Gunther, comments, not hearing any. Call for the vote, all in favor. Signify by saying aye, aye, any opposed. Carries for approval, five to zero. Merry Christmas, Happy Merry New Christmas. Year. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Like that green sweater. John, read 163 in there. We need to vote on the first. We need a vote to rescind the first we, one. We need to, just a motion to reconsider the, um, the prior motion of continuance. That I rescind the motion that I made while ago. Or that you reconsider. Re reconsider. Oh, 163. You, let's just use the word reconsider. Jim. Reconsider. Okay. I'll second that. Let's second that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye, any opposed? Carries for approval. Now, Judy, make a motion. I make a motion that we approve B163 as presented. Put it back on consent agenda. Put it back on the consent agenda. It wasn't presented, was it? Second that, and it was okay. Now, and then you, last, because that prior motion that we reconsidered was for 140 and 163, you'll need to make another motion to to continue 140. Okay. 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 Then we vote on that one. Wait a minute. I, I, I haven't voted on this one yet. Okay. And then oh. I'll make a motion on the 140. I tell you, too many women whisper <laughs> in my ear. Always Murray. gives me problems. <laughs> Always gives me problems. <laughs> Nobody else has that problem. <laughs> Uh, what was the last motion that we didn't we, vote on? We haven't voted on 163. 163. Okay. 163. So I've got that motion. And you, that's agenda, that's 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 that. That. All in favor signify by saying aye. And Mr. Uh, Gunther was the second on there. 
Okay. Another little whisper over there. Now I make a motion that we continue B140. And I'll second that. Okay. Motion. Second. No comments. Call for the vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carries for proof. All the little elves are doing very well. My ears are getting better now. So, with that said, I do have some general announcements to make. A uh, couple of couple of things to finish up. One is that this meeting room may not may not be available for the February meeting. So uh, I think they've got us scheduled to go to another facility across the hall. So I want to make that announcement. Uh, you will hear that later on as time approaches. I'd also like to thank Ms. Swanson for her years of dedicated service to this board and wish her luck in her new assignment. And uh, this board is looking forward to working with Ms. Gray. D. Gray is coming on next month, so we're excited about that. With that said, uh, I need a motion to approve the November the 23rd minutes and the December the 7th minutes. So I'll take. I'll make a and I'll second that. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? And Mr. Peterson has a couple of comments to make. Mr. Chairman, there is one item on today's uh, other business agenda, and that's to adopt the resolution to establish your dates and times and place for your uh, Board of Zoning Appeals uh, variance hearings for 2016. And those are the same dates that you uh, approved previously. At, at a All right, Ms. Swanson, you want to make a motion on that? Your very, your, your, your <clears throat> swan song, make that motion to approve that, please. I make the motion that we approve the, uh, the resolution res for dates and times. The resolution for dates and times for 2016. Hey, Christy, who always talks, is going to say second. All those in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye, aye. Any opposed? Is, Question. Is that, is that requested or announcement about you may not leave this room next time? It does. The, the, the meeting will still take place, but it, it, it's very. The dates, time and place. Yeah, dates, time, and place are still the same. Okay. That reflects that. Lastly, and uh, I guess the last thing to say is happy holidays, Merry Christmas from this board to you, and a happy new year to everybody. Is that appropriate? So I think we've done that. And we'll all wave goodbye to the fans. Howdy doody is off the air for this year.